Hello, in this video we're going to go over a problem on sequence of polynomials. Is there a sequence of real numbers a n for which the polynomial a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared all the way to a n x to the power of n has precisely n distinct roots for every n at uh, greater than or equal to 1? So the way I approach these problems is I start with creating a sequence and then either I'm able to create that sequence or if I'm not able to create that sequence I get an idea of why that sequence doesn't exist and hopefully I can use that to get to a proof. So the first thing is A0. A0 put, could be pretty much anything and A1 also could be pretty much anything. So I'm just going to take A0 and A1 to be 1 and now I want to create A2. So what do I need for A2? I need A0 plus A1x plus A2 x squared to have two roots. Well, since it's a quadratic equation, the only condition for it to have two roots is the discriminant b squared minus 4ac to be positive. And of course that's easy to solve, so we get 1 greater than 4a2, which means any a2 that is less than 1 fourth would work. But how about the third term of the sequence? So a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared, which is the previous polynomial, plus a3x cubed. So we would like this to have three distinct roots. So how do we do that? Well, we don't really have a formula for this one, or the formula that we have is more complicated, so we can't really apply the same method. But what can we do? So initial terms where a0 and a1 equals 1 and what I did was I added a term and you know in, in a way that we create two roots so how do we think about this one well if you have a line and you turn that into a parabola what you do is you kind of basically bend this one of course it's going to change the rest of the line as well but what we're going to do is we're going to bend the line in a way that it doesn't change the portion around the zero which in this case is negative one by all that much so that we have another root so what does that mean it means we are going to create a, in a we are going to create a quadratic in a way that the, there's a point that is positive here, a point that is negative here, and of course at infinity this quadratic would be positive. And then once you have a quadratic, what we're going to do is we're going to again create another cubic by changing this slightly in a way that the values around here, here, and here do not change by all that much, and that way we can add one more root to the existing roots. So how do we deal with this now? So let's make this more rigorous. So let's first assume that all of the roots are negative so that we kind of uh, make things a bit simpler. So I'm going to put everything uh, on the, all of the roots on negative side of the x-axis. So we're going to create a0, a1, and a2 in a way that they're all positive. And I'm going to call this one p2 of x, a2x squared plus a1x plus a0. And let's assume this has two distinct roots. So let's say the two roots um, are here and here. So if we have two distinct roots, then we have three points that at those three points, the values are negative, positive, and positive. And we're going to choose a three in a way that these three values do not change. The signs do not change. These three values, the signs are going to remain negative, positive, and positive. And that should be possible because we can always adjust a three and make it so tiny relative to what happens in this area that that quantity doesn't affect the sign of um, those values. So assume R1 is less than R2, less than R3, and P2 of R1 is positive. So just to be clear, R1, R2, R3 right, are right here. So I have R1 is here, and it may be like R2 is here, and maybe R3 is somewhere around here, that those values for the quadratic are positive. And um, so for R1 is positive, for R2 it is negative, and for R3 it is positive.
So now what we're going to do is we're going to choose A3 in a way that by plugging R1, R2, R3 into P3, we don't change the sign. So P3 of X is A3 X cubed plus P2 of X. So let's plug in R1 into P3 and see what we get. So we would like to not change the sign. So we want A3 R1 cubed plus P2 of R1 to be positive. So let's solve this one. We know R1 is negative, so this would be A3 R1 cubed is greater than negative P2 P2 of R1. We are going to divide by R1 cubed. We get A3 is less than negative P2 of R1 divided by R1 cubed. Now if we look at R1 cubed, this is going to be negative because R1 is negative. P2 of R1 is positive, so this fraction is going to be positive. Now can we make A3 to be less than something positive? Of course we can. And we want to make sure that all of these AIs are positive. So we're going to make sure that A3 is positive. So we're going to make sure A3 is positive and less than some positive number. Now we look at the next term, A3 R2 cubed plus P2 of R2, R2, that would have to be negative. So this gives us A3 is greater than negative P2 of R2 divided by R2 cubed. Again, notice that R2 cubed is negative. That's why when you divide by R2 cubed, you have to flip the direction of inequality. And this guy is also negative. P2 of R2 was at the bottom. So this is P2 of R2. So this would be negative. So this means this fraction is negative. So if we choose R3 to be positive, R3 is, of course, more than any negative number. And finally, for the last one, A3 R3 cubed plus P2 of R3 must be positive. And solving that, we get A3 is less than negative P2 of R3 divided by R3 cubed. And of course, this is again positive with the exact same argument because P2 of R3 is positive and this one is positive, this one is negative, therefore the fraction is positive. So what can we do? We can take A3 to be more than 0 and less than minimum of these two numbers. One of them is negative P2 of R1 divided by R1 cubed and the other one is P2 of R3 divided by R3 cubed. If we choose A3 in this range, then we have three distinct roots. Well, we haven't shown that there's a third root, but that's not very difficult. So what we have shown is P3 of R1 is positive, P3 of R2 is negative, P3 of R3 is positive. R1 is less than R2, less than R3, and they are all negative. Now, since I, A3 is positive, limit of P3 of x as x approaches negative infinity is negative infinity. So at negative infinity, it's negative. At R1, it is positive. So there is a root inside the interval from negative infinity to R1. There is a root in this interval, there is a root here, and there is a root here which means we can find three roots for this cubic. Okay, so how do we deal with this one now in general? So suppose A0, A1, all the way to An, positive, are selected such that Pn of x has n distinct, and of course, since Ais are all positive, roots cannot be positive or zero, so distinct negative roots. If that's the case, and this Pn of x is just basically the polynomial that they gave us, now we are going to go ahead and create a n plus 1. So suppose these are selected such that this has n distinct uh, negative roots. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a n plus 1. So we're going to have to take two cases. So case 1 is when n is even. This is the case going from like the quadratic to cubic case. Since we have n distinct roots, there are r1 less than r2 less than rn plus 1 such that en of r1 is positive, en of r2 is negative, etc. So what that means is pn of rj is positive if j is odd, 
and it is negative if j is even. So what are we going to do now? We are going to create a n plus 1 in a way that it preserves the same inequality. So we're going to choose a n plus 1 such that a n plus 1 is positive and c n plus 1 of r j remains positive if j is odd and c n plus 1 of r j remains negative if j is even. So let's write down these inequalities and see what we get. So the first one is a n plus 1 r j to the power of n plus 1 plus p n of r j is going to be positive. So this is the same as saying a n plus 1 is less than, so remember that n is even, so n plus 1 is odd, so r j to the power of n plus 1 is negative. So when you divide by a negative sign, you'll have to flip the direction of inequality. So that's minus Pn of Rj divided by Rj to the power of n plus 1. So now this quantity is negative. This quantity is positive, so the whole thing is positive. So we can make sure that An plus 1 is less than this. Now for the other inequality, we have An plus 1 times Rj to the power of n plus 1 plus Pn of Rj, that would have to be negative, which means An plus 1 would have to be more than negative Pn of Rj divided by Rj to the power of n plus 1. So this whole thing becomes negative. And just to be clear, the first case when is and j is odd, and the second case is when j is even. So this one is if j is odd, and this one is j is even. When j is even, this quantity is negative. This quantity is also negative. So the whole thing is negative. Therefore, this is automatically satisfied if we make sure that aj a n plus 1 is positive. So what we need is this. We need a n plus 1 to be positive, and we need a n plus 1 to be less than negative p n of r j divided by r j to the power of n plus 1 for all j that is um, odd. For all j odd, we need this. And we clearly can uh, find some a n plus 1 that satisfies this. So that means we can create a n plus 1 in a way that p n plus 1 of r1 is positive Pn plus 1 of R2 is negative, etc. What that means is there is a root for Pn plus 1 in each of these intervals. Each of the intervals, R1 to R2, R2 to R3, all the way to Rn to Rn plus 1. Now, because a n plus 1 is positive and the degree is odd, so n plus 1 is odd and a n plus 1 is positive, so that means the limit of p n plus 1 of x is in fact negative infinity as x approaches negative infinity. Now, we, we know that p n plus 1 of r1 is positive, so that means there is also a root for p n plus 1 in the interval from negative infinity to r1. So that, that means pn plus 1 of x has a total of n plus 1 distinct roots. We have n roots in these intervals, and then we also have one root here, so that gives us n plus 1 roots in these intervals. The second case is when n is odd. So if n is odd, the process is very similar. The only difference is we start with pn of r1 to be negative, Pn of R2 to be positive, etc., all the way to Pn of Rn plus 1 to be positive. And then the process is nearly identical. So what we need is An plus 1 times Rj to the power of n plus 1 plus Pn of Rj to be positive if j is even and negative if j is odd. So the exact same inequalities that we wrote down up there are going to apply here with some minor changes because n plus 1 in this case is even. This guy is going to remain positive. And therefore, we can create an a n plus 1 that is positive and gives us n plus 1 roots 
for Pn plus 1 of x. So in fact, there is such a sequence. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.